Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 248, Make Them an Offer They Can't Refuse, recorded on Friday, April 28, 2023 from Zanata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt and let's get right on into the show. Yeah, before we do, we didn't mention this last week, but if everybody notices, there's a new Zoho logo. Gone are yeah. the little alphabet blocks of yore, now replaced by a uh, bunch of little colored squares and Zoho underneath. Or the, yeah, Very if you small. squint real hard, you'll be able to see there is the word Zoho in that logo. Um, might be a little outsized by the big blocks, but uh, it does still say Zoho. We do like it. I kind of, I think it's an improvement. Obviously, the old blocks were a bit of a foundational thing. They've been around for so long, but I think it's it's a good idea to modernize it. So, good well, job, this Zoho. This is part of their, logo. Uh, uh, is, what is it, Logolinism? Is that what they call yeah, it? Yeah, Logolinism, kind of flattening. Logolinism where they've kind of changed all of the logos over time. And kind of the last thing was this, and this really kind of fits in with that, that overall design scheme very, very well. Um, and, you know, but it's funny though, when you take it and you kind of shrink it down, like they did on our new partner badge, uh, cause you notice the partner badge has changed too. Um, Zoho's there, but uh, you know, that'll be good. An eye chart thing, right? And line one and line two. <laughs> Line one, I see four big blocks. Line two, I don't see anything. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Can you make out those letters? I can't. All righty. Well, with that, let's get right on into news and events. Or not news and events, announcements and events. Something like that, Tyler. Where is this year going, man? I don't know. I was talking to someone the other day, April 24th. And, you know, already or now it's April 28th. I mean, I don't know. It was April 24th, four days ago, it seems like. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> News and upcoming events. We've got a lot going on. Um, I had the pleasure yesterday of uh, pre-recording a uh, new overview of Z Portals with John Mark Bantock um, from Catalyst Connect and Z Portals fame, and uh, we're going to drop that as a premiere video on Tuesday, May second at ten a.m. And the team from Z Portals will actually be on that premiere in the chat room. So if you've got questions and you want to ask them, um, go ahead and uh, mark your calendars for 10 a.m. on Tuesday. And you can watch that and ask any questions that you may have. Um, and honestly, if you if, if a client portal is kind of anywhere in your horizon and you're a Zoho user, it's worth checking out Z Portals. Even if you're not going to make this decision now, highly recommend checking out the webinar because it is the easiest way to get a client portal spun up. And it probably covers about 90% of the clients we work with who want a portal, like everything they need is done in there. Um, so highly recommend checking that one out. It's a, it's a great platform. They've made over 75 major improvements to it in the last year. And then like another you know, 75 oh, yeah. minor improvements. Um, yeah. So much has been going on there and it is just a great, Great portal yeah, the big, the board. A big update that I had totally missed is that uh, the Catalyst Connect team actually figured out a way to blend the Z portals login with like the WordPress account login. So you can have one single login to get into like a WooCommerce order portal and the Z yep. portals, which somehow I had just completely missed that they had added that. Um, but that's a huge update, I think, since the last time we covered the product. So should be a good so webinar. Many. And just because I guess I, uh, I, we've got Zoho Books, a guided tour. I guess that's not one of our events. That must be a Zoho event coming up. Okay. Um, and okay. what is our webinar going to be for? Um, I think it's going to be year. inventory with uh, Shopify integrations, kind of e-com integrations might cover WooCommerce as well, but essentially a run through of inventory and the common things that get plugged into it. So I think that's going to be Cody and Josh should be a great one to tune in for. Fantastic. Fantastic. And as always, you know, we've got our new show, Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho or Azaz. And uh, that drops every, uh, what are we dropping that, Tuesday? Wednesday. Friday? Wednesday. Course, every Wednesday morning one. at 10 o'clock. So it's going to be a busy week. We're going to have Z Portals on Tuesday, then Wednesday, then this show on Friday. Uh, a lot of content coming your way. And if you don't know, if you head over to Club Zanata, which is where we keep all of our events, uh, you can keep join our community. Ask us questions that we will answer on our Azaz show, show as well. And then Tyler and I, we do the uh, CRM Zen show, and it's basically based on all of the news that is dropped by Zoho during the 
week. And we actually capture that during the week. So you can kind of read about what we're going to do before we even do it over here. Uh, you don't have to wait for us to do the show to find out what's going on in the world of Zoho. But it's so much more entertaining if you do wait and listen to us. Uh, so uh, head on over to Club Zanata and uh, check out. Please join our community. And with that, Tyler, let's get straight on into the news. And Zoho Analytics has some updates that they are uh, announcing. Uh, a couple of big ones here, Tyler. I'm going to let you kind of cover all of this. But uh, I guess they are now going to uh, integrate with uh, GA4, Google Analytics 4. But that's kind yep. of a, uh, kind of a, a need to, to have. Thing. Yeah, it's kind of a need to have. Um, I don't know the exact timeline, but Wayne, our director of marketing, was letting me know that Google is going to uh, highly recommend and then eventually force everyone to swap over to Google Analytics 4. So obviously Zoho kind of ahead of, ahead of the deadline here has already created that connector. So just know if you are using Google Analytics now and you're using Zoho Analytics and pulling that data in, you will very likely need to recreate your connector, right? So you'll do the migration on the Google side and then reconnect it into Zoho Analytics. Um, but again, these are just clearly a click right together, super easy to set up. Um, and then they've also added advanced analytics for YouTube ads. So if you are doing any programmatic advertising on YouTube, obviously you want to be able to report on that. So nice to be able to pull that directly in. Um, again, the more connectors, the better, right? Because it's just one less thing that we'd have to write code, right? To pull into Zoho Analytics. Yep. Um, outside of that, just a couple odds and ends. Some um, looks like some updates to geographic reports, um, doing some projections across uh, geographic data, right? So a little bit more support for kind of map-based reporting here. Um, but yeah, other than that, kind of the big names there are those connectors and kind of a, we'll call it a lightweight PSA. If you have not moved over to Google Analytics 4, you should go ahead and rip that Band-Aid off um, and then obviously reconfigure your Zoho Analytics connector. All righty, moving on with the news here. Um, this is a big one, actually. So if you are, we're talking about portals, uh, CRM in and of itself does have a very, a portal that you can enable and allow your customers to access. It's rather limited um, in a lot of the things it can do. You know, you're just seeing if it's an account, you're seeing the account level and the cost and the just the actual um, contact level and some things related to that. But there are some nice things you can do in there. And for a lot of companies, this can work for them very well. Um, so they've done a big update to this and that they are now supporting blueprints for portal users. So um, that's pretty nice. So if you know what a blueprint is, that is basically something that steps you step by step by step through a process in the CRM. And you can't really go to the next step without completing a certain step and filling in certain information. Mm -hmm. uh, you can now have that exact same, uh, all those transitions can now be supported inside of the portal. Yeah, and it looks like you don't have to allow all transitions for portal users. You can kind of pick and choose. So if you had yep. like a 10 step blueprint, you might say, you know what, only steps two through four are gonna be relevant for the portal. They don't need to see this other stuff going on. Um, so you can do that just natively through here and kind of one of the examples that they give, which honestly, I think is, uh, you know, kudos Zoho, kind of a great example is if you're doing uh, insurance, right, and you have customers who need to submit a claim, right, being able to log in and submit a claim the right way, right, with all the required info, put it in the correct order, you know, require a file upload if you need to. Um, there are definitely use cases where this would be a great to have feature in the portal. So good ad by Zoho. This is one I wasn't really expecting, but it's definitely a, a nice one. Yeah. And my guess is they probably did this for an insurance company. You never know. It's got to be. Could be. <laughs> it works perfect for that. So it's, it wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. And now roles, profiles, and web forms can be bulk deleted in the CRM on the admin tool side of things. So in the past, you would have to go through and step by step, one by one, delete roles and profiles that you weren't using anymore. And if you had created dozens of web forms and you wanted to change those, you would have to delete them uh, one by one. And now you can bulk delete them. A small update, but a little bit of quality of life there, Tyler. Yeah. And for those, I think we talked about the admin tools a little while back. What that is, it's basically a backend way to look for configuration pieces that are unused. 
So when you're talking about like mass deleting your web forms, you would apply a filter and say, show me which web forms haven't been touched in a year. And then I want to delete all of those in one big push, right? Or show me the, a role that hasn't had anyone in it for six months. Okay, we probably don't need that role. Um, we can go ahead and clean it up. So yeah, the more the merrier on this tool, the things it could already do are like email templates, workflows, custom views, things like that. So yeah. uh, kudos to Noho, the more that we can add here, the better, because it's actually a really useful cleanup tool um, because you're able to easily see if any of these things are being used, right? You don't need to go around the office and see if anyone's using it. If they're using it, it'll show up here and then you can avoid deleting it. Um, so good job, Zoho. Good stuff. And moving on, um, this is a crazy one. Uh, you now can now deploy Zobots for on Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp, as well as mobile apps and website, which you could always do. Um, but it's uh, basically if you've got a Zobot and maybe one of your channels of communication is Instagram or Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, uh, you can deploy that Zobot on those applications now. Um, really cool. And it uh, works look, yeah, just like a regular Zobot would inside on your uh, on your website. Awesome. Yeah, and I know That's a cool. lot of people do kind of use these as inbound channels. Um, obviously, for something in kind of the sales perspective could be really nice. Um, just being able to tie that right in. I know obviously WhatsApp in the US is not as popular, but basically everywhere else it is uh, a go to option for communication. So being able to just tie this right in is, is super slick. Um, unexpected. Yeah, I, mean, this, I mean, WhatsApp is what a lot of people use as their personal instant messenger, right? Which is why so many companies use it that way. I think it'd be cool though, just as an individual to deploy a Zoebot on your own individual IM, you know? Hey, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? You know, you just, <laughs> you, just go, you know, have, have Zobot just handle clicks? all. <laughs> What's, that? What's that? Can I put a Zobot and click and it can act as yeah. me, So I don't have to. That would be great. Anything anymore. Just have it. Yeah, that would be great. Put it in my email. You can answer my emails for me. Answer your email. So uh, build your Zobot, deploy it across all of your IM channels. So Zobot for IM channels is now live, and that's a pretty major uh, major update there. So uh, kudos to the Sales IQ team for that. And then moving on. Um, so Tyler, in Zoho Desk, uh, you actually explained this to me before the show. Uh, comments are always set to private. And if you wanted to make comments public, you would have to turn on that the comments for that particular ticket or thread are public. And now by default, you can set up everything to be public. Did I get that right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, comments have two kind of purposes. Um, they can be used for internal communication about a ticket. And they can also be used to leave a comment on a ticket that you want the customer to see, but that doesn't need to go out as an email. And the default behavior, which I think is the right default behavior, is that comments are private by default. And you have to kind of toggle it to public if you want it to be public, which I think is how most people use tickets, right? Internal stuff in the comments, external stuff goes out as an email. Um, but there are people that do want to make the majority of their comments public. And previously, you just had to select public every single time that you left a comment across the board, one by one, every single one. Um, so now you can essentially just make it a setting and say, hey, by default, we want to make them public and we'll make them private one by one uh, if that is your use case. So a good one here, nice to have. I think, again, most people are never going to touch it. They're going to keep them private. Uh, but if you want them to be public, you don't have to do it in such a painstaking way anymore. Yeah. And if you do set it to public and you've got a bullpen full of agents in there. You know how Ted Lasso's got that big sign that says believe right above his door. I think I'd put one up there that says behave because you would want these, you want to keep keep your comments uh, above That's board if you're going to share them with the rest of the world, right? I like Don't that one, Brett. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. We, Zoho Recruit, we got a little bit of recruit news here. Um, they are now introducing the offers sub module, which allows you to generate offer letters and manage offer letters that you have sent out to a potential candidate uh, and new employee. So you can 
send them an offer of employment and uh, from right within here, you can revise it. You can withdraw the offer, uh, maybe based upon some public comments they made in Zoho Desk. But uh, you've basically uh, got the ability to manage it directly out of Zoho Recruit right now. So very nice. Awesome. Yeah, and I think this is kind of similar to them building that applications module that we talked about a few weeks back. I think the yeah. recruit team is identifying there are a couple things that can actually happen more than once per candidate. Like they could apply to multiple jobs. You might send them, I mean, this would be rare, but you might send them two offers. Hey, you could join either our sales team or our marketing team because you're a great fit for both, right? So carving some of these things out of the candidate module, I think is uh, these are good improvements for the application. Question I have, if you're watching us on YouTube, is why would you put your offer letter in a toaster? I don't understand. Am I, am I looking at that wrong? It does look uh, exactly <laughs> like a toaster. Is there anything else that could be other than a toaster? Well, it's got the toaster thing on the side where you push down. Yeah. Otherwise, I would think it'd be a printer. But I, I don't know, man. I think... Uh... Anyway, if you, that's I'm just yeah, that's if, you need to, uh, if you need to recall the offer, it goes in the toaster and you can- It goes in the toaster. It that's it. All righty. So nice job, Zoho Recruit team. We probably should make uh, this one down as kind of a notable update for Zoho Recruit because I think that's a pretty, uh, pretty nice update there. All righty. And then moving on uh, also with Zoho Recruit is you can now simplify your file management in Zoho Recruit basically allowing you to uh, bulk delete and download attachments. So before it was one by one, and now you can uh, download them as a zip file or delete them in mass. Yeah, nice to have. Why not, right? Why not? That's fantastic. Uh, Josh says it's a paper shredder. Could be a paper shredder. On that previous one, if it's not a toaster, maybe a shredder. Maybe, maybe not a lot of, not a lot of room for the shred to go though. I don't know. We'll see. All right. And then moving on. Why would you shred your, your, your offer letter? I guess if you're recalling it, there you go. All right. Then moving on, uh, Zoho bookings, which is Zoho's online booking tool, um, now supports Google meet. So if you do your meetings using Google meet, then, um, you can now, uh, use Zoho bookings to automatically attach that Google Meet invite to it when the uh, Zoho bookings goes out. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, and I mean, the more and I believe we did check, right? they natively support Zoom now too, I think, right? So maybe Josh, if you put it in the chat, Josh, I'm doing some testing and bookings. I think they natively support it now where it doesn't come yeah. in as an update after the fact. Um, so yeah, I, I think it is supported. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, the more the merrier, right? The big thing with any of these bookings tools is they need to tie in every calendar, every single, you know, meeting option, all the normal yeah. ones at least, right? So that uh, there aren't barriers for people getting this going. Yeah, this is nice though. It automatically adds the meeting details to Google Calendar if you're connect connecting with that. You know, we've never looked at Google Meet as an actual yeah. online tool. Have you ever plenty, spent any time playing with that at all? I used to, yeah, one of our old clients, we had a weekly call and it was on their calendar and it was in Google Meet. It's interesting. The one thing I always had a problem with it in is that uh, maybe this was just a user error, but it would always error out if I would try to screen share and I wasn't in Chrome. It's like they only allowed certain things if you loaded the Google Meet in Chrome. Um, hmm. You know, I've never had that issue on a different tool. So that was always a little suspicious. It's like, okay, you just want me to use Chrome. I see what's going on yeah, here. Yeah, interesting, interesting. It's uh, because it's. I think it's included if you have a, you know, your Google email and your stuff's handled there, right? I think Google Meet's just part of that. It's not even an extra charge. So you know, for yeah. those of you that are using that and using Zoho Bookings, um, I tell you, we Josh has been liking Zoho Bookings. The only thing that what it can't do right now is look at multiple people's calendars, right? And and book an event for multiple people by looking at or the calendars both of them. And the yeah, time. I can round robin, but if we wanted to if we wanted to give a link to book with Brett and Tyler and we both need to be there, bookings cannot quite do that yet. Yeah. Which is uh needed. Very good. All right. And moving right along, let's go to our implementation of the week.
Alrighty, so this is a implementation that we did for one of our clients. JP here was kind of the primary developer on this, working with Drew, the consultant for this client. Um, and this is a custom integration between Dialpad um, for syncing SMS uh, from Dialpad over to CRM uh, via a Zoho Flow connector. Um, so really the trick with this one is, is that this client uses SMS a lot and they get SMS coming in, they send them out, um, they could be sending SMS to leads, to contacts, really to anybody who's in this system. And they wanted to make sure they had a consolidated way to organize all of those SMS into CRM, kind of categorize them as an inbound, an outbound, and make sure that everything ends up linked to those proper records in the CRM. So first thing that the team did was essentially look at the dial pad side of the house and figure out, okay, what can it do, right? And they found that really any time an SMS was sent or received, um, Dialpad could post a webhook. And so for us, that makes our you know, light bulb go off. And they decided to create a, a Zoho flow that's triggered by a webhook. Um, then all they needed to do is kind of point that Dialpad webhook over to flow um, to trigger the automation you know, each time that an SMS is sent or received. From there, the flow uses a set of custom functions to kind of organize the SMS. Right, it figures out if it's inbound, figures it out if it's outbound, um, searches the CRM to determine if this is a existing contact, existing lead, or maybe neither, right? Maybe we need to create a record based on this. Um, and then we can go ahead and create a, uh, a record of that SMS in a custom module that we built um, where it will be properly connected to the lead, the contact, the custom module if necessary, um, right? That's relevant for that SMS. A couple tricks here. If um, you know uh, people at home want to try out a build like this, just make sure that you have a function in place so that when a lead converts, all of those SMS will end up connected to that contact, right? So there's a couple little best practices and kind of tricks of the trade that go into this one, um, but structurally pretty simple, right? Dialpad is just posting all those uh, webhooks, flows catching all of them, processing through the data, and then logging it cleanly into CRM so that we can look at it on like a per contact basis, or actually pull analytics on SMS usage as a whole, or really sliced by any different um, qualifier that we want to report on. So Very shout nice. out to the team. This is a good one. Again, a lot of these uh, solutions have pre-baked connections uh, for telephony, uh, but they don't all have a pre-baked solution for SMS. And so sometimes we find ourselves kind of building these custom flows to fill the gap. Good stuff, Drew and JP. All right, and with that, let's move on to our code share of the week. And today we have a double code share, uh, Tyler. So uh, both Josh and Greg have uh, put together some cool stuff here. Uh, Josh actually, I believe through one of our uh, clients, uh, David Evans, they discovered that you actually can launch a filtered custom view using URL parameters. Can you walk us through this? Yeah, so essentially let's say you are in CRM um, and you have a custom view of you know, deals of a certain type, right? And maybe this custom view has five or six parameters in it that are the same all the time, right? But let's say that as part of a workflow, you wanted a user to land on that custom view but only see deals for maybe a particular account, right? Or a particular thing that uh, they were on before they landed on this view. And so essentially what you can do is let's say via a button press, part of a blueprint, if there's a redirect, you can create a unique URL that will apply the filter from that custom view, um, but also apply a dynamic filter on top of it based on where you're coming from. Um, so again, not one that you need in every single implementation, um, but definitely something to have in your back pocket, because if you need to do this, this is the only way to do it. Um, and it does work really consistently. Uh, so shout out to Josh on that. That's a nice find. And actually, I guess shout out to David Evans as well uh, and Fidelgo Coffee. They, uh, they kind of brought this one to us and helped us or we helped him get it over the line. Yeah, really, uh, really slick. Like you say, very specific use case here. But uh, if you need it, there it is. And then this one is super cool. So Greg has now determined that using client scripting, if you're unfamiliar with client scripting, this is a script that actually runs on page inside of Zoho CRM. So 
rather than having to, you know, you'll do something, you have to refresh the page to actually see, like you click this box and then this automatically fills in. You can run a client script to run stuff on page. Um, it's extremely useful for so many different things. I mean, it's very, very powerful, you know, creating a deal and you want every deal to have a specific name, you know, a specific naming convention and structure. You can automatically generate that. Um, but this is a crazy one. Uh, you can now basically mask data in a list view um, by, uh, by simply, you know, using this, this client script in a list view. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see this is a case where basically the emails have all been hidden. Um, so, you know, you're, you're basically filtering out the emails so a person can't actually see what they are, the person's full name. You know, we were talking about this, Tyler. Um, I don't know. Greg actually is in the chat room right now. I'd love to know. So can you run this client script on a record by record basis? What where based on your permissions, you're actually doing the same thing and you're masking data inside of a record. Um, so not hiding those fields, just masking the data. Uh, that would be the, the big use case for this, right? Yeah. Thinking about like, maybe you have social security in an encrypted field, you have a call center, they need to just see last four, right? Would you be able to do it on a record by record basis? Because here we can definitely do it in a list. Um, but a huge use case of this would be to use it within a given record to hide particular information or only show a subset of that information. Um, so yeah, great code share, one that uh, I would imagine a decent amount of people would want to take a look at. Absolutely. Nice, All right. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> and with that, let's head over to... Uh, Zanata and see what's new over there. Before we do that, Greg has said, yes, you can actually also run this on the detail view inside of a record. So beautiful, very cool, very cool and That's very awesome. useful. All right. And so over at Zanata.com, we have a new blog, which is six ways Zoho Creator can revolutionize your business workflow. And if you are not familiar with Zoho Creator, it is Zoho's low code custom app implementation tool. And uh, we've been, uh, it seems like we're answering more and more questions on Creator lately. And Josh has done a great job in putting a whole bunch of Creator videos out. Um, and uh, people keep saying more, bring more. Um, but, you know, we've got some nice things here. I, I mean, I think, Tyler, if you were to look at it, uh, you know, it's really, you can build an entire app out of it, but I think what so much of it comes down to is there's, there's these one or two little things that you might be able to do in a couple of Zoho apps, the you know standard applications, but maybe this ties them all together. Maybe it's ease of use. Maybe it's people in the field. Um, I guess I guess there are just so many things you can use it for, um, but this yeah. is a nice kind of rundown of that. A lot of the times too, where we start is, you know, take a list of all the functionality someone needs figure out which of those functionalities can go into a native application, right? Because if you can do it natively, just do it there, right? And then carve out creator as kind of an extension of the rest of your Zoho workflow, right? So like home base is Zoho CRM, but for field service guys, they're using this kind of lightweight creator app to log some activity and all that's writing across. Um, yep. But you know, you where you want to stay away is like rebuilding CRM from scratch in Creator, right? Because there's just so much pre baked functionality out of the gate with uh, a lot of existing apps. But definitely want to keep on the radar for solving those kind of unique use cases that you may come across. All right. And with that, doesn't happen every week, but we've got one this week. Let's head over and take a look at our pick of the week. All right, this is Deadline Funnel. Uh, Tyler, you've been playing around with this a lot, and this is your pick of the week. So uh, tell us all about it. Yeah, so essentially Deadline Funnel, it's a, a product that does one thing. You know, sometimes we talk about this, Brett, like with products that just only do one thing. And so they're just fantastic at doing it, right? So what Deadline Funnel does is it basically lives between your outbound marketing, like maybe an email drip, and let's call it like a coupon page, a discount page. And what it does is it gives you a way to track and kind of cookie people that are visiting a page or that are clicking through to a page from an email. 
and start a timer for them on a limited time discount, right? So it's kind of a way to create an evergreen funnel where you're getting the benefits of time sensitivity, but you're not having to do it in big batches, right? So it's not like we start 500 leads and they all get a 14 day timer. It's each lead gets a 14 day timer based on when they come in just dynamically. So it gives you a way to benefit from some of that kind of like, you know, pre-launch excitement, like, hey, I have this deadline to get this coupon, um, but you're not having to like manually create these waves of timed discounts. Um, so really interesting product. Uh, it doesn't send the emails. It doesn't uh, capture payments. It doesn't do any of that. It just lives on the in-between and basically tracks people and redirects them. So if you tried to go back to this limited time offer page after your timer had expired, it knows who you are and you can redirect them back to a page that doesn't have that discount enabled. Um, so really interesting product uh, fits right in if you need it. So if this sounds like something you need, this is the one, this is the app to do it. Um, highly recommend it. Onboarding was insanely simple and easy. Um, so yeah, definitely want to take a look at it. This sounds like something that you need. Yes, and so look for some sales on our Zoho T CRM team training because I think that's what we may have purchased this for. <laughs> so be. we'll be, uh, <laughs> there'll, there'll be some things coming your way. All right, great, great, great product and uh, nice, nice pick, Tyler. So with that, let's head on over to our tip of the week. You know, it took me a long time, if you're watching on YouTube, to pause this video at just the right spot. Um, but uh, Greg, wearing his fantastic Zanata hat after just smoking a Big J, is going to teach you on uh, how to create a custom sync to Zoho Analytics via Deluge. Um, so Tyler, basically, if it's not one of the pre-baked, uh, one of the pre-baked integrations into Zoho Analytics, what Greg is teaching you here is basically you can make your own, you can make your own connector. Yep. Yeah. So if there isn't a connector or maybe the connector you're using doesn't have certain data, like in this case, I think the example he goes through is actually the CRM, Zoho CRM pipeline data that doesn't all come across in the pre-built connector. Um, so actually you could, you know, use this walkthrough to get something done and also learn some stuff because a lot of people do actually need that pipeline data. Um, on the analytics side of the house. So good video kind of walks through how to get the data, how to organize the data, and then how to dump it all into an analytics workspace. Uh, so shout out to and Greg. If, you are not, if you're truly not, have not watched any of Greg's videos, I highly, highly, highly recommend you, uh, you, you watch his videos. Number one, they are extremely educational. He teaches in a really, really nice format, and uh, they are funny as all get out. Um, you know, so you, you'll get some chuckles and you'll learn something at the same time. So, uh, great, great, great job, and thanks, thanks so much for doing that, buddy. All right, Tyler. Well, I guess that is going to uh, wrap us up, huh? I think so. Yeah. Now that the right. Q and A has been moved over to a Zaz, uh, premiering every single Wednesday. Uh, so we don't do that here now. We'll do it over there. Check that out. Um, you know, we'll leave your comments here on any of our videos and we do our best to answer all of those. So yeah, Brett, I think we're good to wrap it up. That was good. Yep. Thanks everybody for joining us for another edition of the CRM Zen show. We are coming up on five years. That's just a few weeks from now. So you'll be want to stay tuned for that show. We're going to have a big, big, big show. In the meantime, if you want to get a hold of Tyler or myself or anybody over at Zanata, please just go to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. Um, if you want all that news delivered straight to your inbox every single Monday, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, and as always, uh, we would love and appreciate if you would like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Take care, everybody.